Yes. Okay. So okay. there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Easy enough. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, all right, everybody. Well, we have a, a number of folks on the line right now. Uh, I want to just introduce myself real fast. My name is Randy Schwarzman. I am the president of the A.L. Wilson Chemical Company. Um, I've been with A.L. Wilson now for about 10 years. Uh, I work with uh, Fred, who is my father. He's been doing it for about 45 years now. Um, so he really knows the ins and outs of the industry. He really knows the ins and outs of the products. Um, but like I was saying a little bit earlier, our, we make stain removers, right? That is, that is what we focus on. And our partnership with Wotec goes back decades, at least 30 years, uh, if not a little bit more than that. Um, and it's been, um, it's been a long run and, and we've had a lot of success working together, uh, primarily through Dubai in the Middle East, um, and recently, uh, into, uh, into India, um, which is why, uh, Rash and Divya suggested that we had the, we have this training now with, uh, Shashi coming on board. And I guess there's a, tr a trade show coming up soon as well. Like within the next few days, I believe, uh, in Delhi. Yeah. Yeah, it's yes. from 14 to 18 March. Okay, okay. Um, so then, that, then this is very timely to, oh, I'm sorry, hold on one second here. Just getting a phone call that rang through my iPad. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so this is, so this is very timely. Um, and I think this is a real good opportunity to really kind of start a, a, a heavy push uh, into um, into the Indian marketplace for our stain removers. I, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, and I think that we can bring a lot of value to the marketplace. Um, so Bob Edwards has been with the company now for what, Bob, 35 years? No, 30 years. 30 years, okay. <laughs> Take, give you that that old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so Bob is one of our regional vice presidents. Uh, who is responsible for uh, training and customer management throughout all of the Northeastern United States uh, and Eastern Canada. Um, and he really kind of leads our training sessions, especially from an international point of view, because Bob has some experience uh, growing up in India, I believe, correct? Yes, I was born in Tamil Nadu in the southern part of India. So oh, yeah, great. It's, it's great, great, great out there. Good to know. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh great, great, great. I so see, he's always also. he's always itching to get back to India. So we figured we throw him a bone and let him talk to you guys for a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> so um, with that note, I will turn it over to Bob and he has a little presentation to kind of uh, introduce our products, uh, explain how to use them optimally. Uh, explain how they fit into the larger picture and really, most importantly, how we can, uh, you know, place the products uh, most successfully going forward. So with that, I'll turn it over, Bob. Thanks, Randy. Uh, yeah, I was born in India. I spent 18 years out there. Um, my parents worked as missionaries, so I went to school in, in Kodakana for the school for uh, sons and daughters of missionaries, business people, consulate people, and and Indian people as well. But, uh, and I came to the States for college. So nice, it's nice to see you guys. Uh, and I look forward to coaching you from any, any time you can give us a call and we'd be glad to try and help you. Uh, I'm pleased to be working with you this morning. And I think back to about uh, 10 or 15 years ago uh, when I had the privilege of, of actually seeing the uh, WOTEC operation in Dubai. Um, I went there to do seminars and to do some end user calls with uh, Manu, I think uh, was the gentleman's name. And, and uh, uh, today I want to thank Randy also for his help because he's going to be helping me with this slide projection. We're going to see some slides as we talk, uh, which will illustrate um, solutions to some pretty tough problems that, you, uh, that your end users will be uh, coming across. And I welcome your questions uh, along the way. So uh, feel free to, to interrupt. i uh, be happy to uh, try and answer any questions you have. Please feel free. So there are many competitive products, as Randy said, that, uh, that are out there, such as sites. Um, but where we fit in is in performance. It's a niche market. We strictly focus on stain removal. 
and we focus on performance and safety. And I invite you in a competitive situation to compare one product with the other actually on the spotting board. And you'll, you will see that our products are indeed performance related. In addition to that, our, our products are safe for the environment, safe for the operator. And um, there, when you have that combination of environmentally friendly and effective, it's a tough line to follow, but we've done very, we've done very well in putting those products out to the market very successfully. I want to introduce uh, our um, spotting sequence that um, we usually teach beginning spotters about. If Randy will put up simple steps, please. Randy? Okay, I'll begin talking about it. Uh, oh, here it is, there we go. There are basically uh, five things that a dry cleaner has to do in, or a laundry man has to do in taking out step, uh, in, in, in terms of taking out stains. It's very simple, it's not rocket science, but you really need to remove any kind of soil, oil and grime from the fabric. You really need to secondly remove any kind of heavy greases, paint, oil and grease. Thirdly, anything that is grown from the ground would be called tannins. Fourthly, anything that is from the body, proteins, uh, that would be blood, vomit, urine. And if, all, if, if you have uh, done all those steps and the stain is still there, at least a fragment of the stain, shall we say, you can go with your oxygen bleaches. As uh, Shashi had just said, he is very familiar with oxygen bleaches. They take out those yellow stains on the fabric that are, are left. Once you've removed all the ingredients of the stain, all you have left is a dye, maybe dye from a coffee bean or maybe dye from some, some plant or whatever it is, the resulting uh, stain can be removed with an oxygen bleach. Our second slide would be uh, how I would organize a spotting board. So you see here, I, I, there are many configurations of spotting boards. This is a very typical um, format uh, that you see in the United States. Uh, over on the left side of the board, if you see the top, top diagram would be the vacuum and the, the work area would be where the word spotting board are. And then you have a, a chemical area right on the right side. Is that how the spotting boards look? Uh, where, that you see uh, in Dubai and India? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So there'll be a vacuum, there'll be a, a steam gun, there'll be a, an air gun, or there'll be an air function to it. So you can actually steam out and vacuum um, the stains and the chemicals that you put out. What goes in has to come out. Yeah. So in terms of our number one step, which was soil, oil, and grime, we have two basic products, which uh, actually um, people like to hang them from the side of the spotting board. On the dry side, you will see easy go. And on the wet side, you will see right go. And uh, both of those products are your number one step that we talked about in the first slide. The number one step is soil, oil, and grime. Right go is especially effective on the laundry side to remove not only soil, oil, and grime, but to prepare a stain so that if you need to go further, it's like a lubricant. It swells the fiber, it, it aids in, the, uh, in whatever you're going to do as a next step. Easy Go, on the other hand, is a solvent-based product. Uh, Easy Go is something you can, you can spray, tamp, and you can put whatever solvent you have, whether it be sensine or, uh, whatever solvent, hydrocarbon or perc, perchloroethylene, you can put easy go directly into the dry cleaning machine without flushing. So you spray it, you tamp it, and you can put it in the machine. It's a very uh, high performance kind of a soil, oil, and grime remover. Supposing we have um, a silk blouse, a silk blouse yeah. uh, that has um, propensity to, to bleed once you use a, a water-based product or steam. 
not all silks will bleed with steam, but um, let's face it, there's a lot of dyes out there that are not, uh, are not very stable. And with the presence of water, uh, like when you start steaming something, you inject water into the stain. You'll see a big ring sometimes develop and sometimes you lose color. So EasyGo prevents all that from happening because it uh, uh, is a solvent-based product. So you have a little makeup on the side of a silk blouse. You can just spray the EasyGo tamp it. Maybe wait five, 10 minutes because the longer you wait, uh, given say 30, 40 minutes is fine. And then you can put it in the dry cleaning machine. It's still wet. It's had a few minutes to penetrate and it, it, will, it, will, it most likely will remove in the dry cleaning machine. And in this case, we're teaching efficiency because on the dry side, if you are avoiding, avoiding the presence of steam, you are avoiding the, the work of having to vacuum flush and dry. Because if you are using, uh, say, hydrocarbon solvent, hydrocarbon does not like the presence of water. So what will happen sometimes is redeposition. And we want to avoid redeposition. And EasyGo is an excellent way to avoid problems like redeposition and excessive work on the spotting board. Excessive work means the, the business of vacuum and flushing and drying. So it's, a easy, it's a very, very efficient way to go. And it's also a very effective uh, product to use on soil, oil, and grime. Um, you will see that EasyGo is a light POG. It's a leveling agent. It's a silk pre-spotter. It's a general spotter. Um, so it's your first, it's your number one thing to use when you're dry cleaning. Now, many of, many of the applications uh, that you'll come across, or, or even most of them, people are leaning towards wet cleaning. And in that case, and in that case, right go is your absolute go-to product because you will see nothing like the soil release that right go produces on the wet side. Write down these words, micro emulsion, micro M-I-C-R-O emulsion. Micro emulsion is the, is the uh, proprietary feature of right go, which allows the penit the comp the, the product to penetrate deeply into the soil and lift it like you would with a sponging action. It absorbs, it helps to absorb the, uh, the, the soil, oil, and grime. And this way your work is highly reduced in terms of scrubbing because the right go does the work for you. Let the chemical do the work, let the la laundry machine, or in the case of easy go, let the dry cleaning machine do the extraction of the stain. So uh, sorry, uh, just just please, just please. as uh, the right go, uh, what we are talking about, we have to. Uh, this is this product is for wet cleaning. If I'm it's not wrong, yes. On the right side, we have the okay. wet cleaning uh, uh, soil, oil, and grime remover. On the dry side, okay. we have the solvent-based product, Easy Go for dry Easy cleaning. Easy Go. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. 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 Okay. Okay. Also, right. uh, just to be clear, sorry. So the right go uh, works anytime you're working on the wet side. So it would be great for uh, wet cleaning, but it also is very applicable for use in laundry environments. Laundry, yes. That's where the water is actually related. The right go is with the water, go with the water. And with the solvent, it will go with the dry cleaning like easy go. What is the yep. basic, I understand. Thank so what, you. What, what Randy is also saying is, Right go can be put directly into the into the washer to the tune of maybe if a fifty pound washer you can put in a couple ounces uh, as a neutral lubricant and as a soil release and that will also help to re relieve the, the 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 person who's doing the spotting from scrubbing collars. Um, okay. Okay. Cuff and collar also. Yeah. 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 Cuff and collar, okay. uh, neutral lubricant, many many uh, uses. It's also uh, a light POG. Okay it, okay, has, okay. it has the ability to take, and I'll show you in another slide, not right this second, but I will show you in, a, in another slide how it, it takes out some oils. Okay, uh, okay. Shall we go to step number two? Yeah. Uh, step number two is your second line there. You have three different POGs. POG stands for paint, oil, and grease. Paint, okay. oil, and grease. Okay. So... Yeah. 
If I tell you that easy go and right go are light POGs, you will yeah. understand that in, you, you may be surprised you see a grease stain and apply right go or easy go and it may be gone. You don't have to immediately step up to your heavy POGs. Now, <clears throat> easy go is right next to Targo EF in the picture because the operator is going to reach for easy go on a dry side for a dry cleaning application. And there you have to, if you have one more thing to do to step up, the Targo EF is right there because that can also flush out in hydrocarbon or sensine or, or K4 or any other application or any other solvent without damaging the solvent. It's compatible with all those solvents. You don't need a separate uh, dry cleaning POG uh, uh, to, to do different things with different solvents. So for the environmentally friendly solvents and for perchloroethylene, you can have, you have, you can have one uh, POG. Inco has, is also a solvent-based product. Uh, Inco, if you're using Inco, you do need to do, you do need to take care to at least vacuum it out before you put it in the dry cleaning machine and level it with EasyGo. So Inco usually is compatible with, uh, with PERC, it's certainly compatible with some of the, uh, uh, some, with some of the um, other solvents, the environmentally sol friendly solvents. Uh, it may or may not flush out. It's not gonna hurt the solvent, but it, it may leave a little residue. So to avoid that residue, you add a little easy go before you dry clean it and it'll be no problem. You just have to remove the bulk of it on the spotting, uh, on the stain. So if you have an effect. Uh, one question, yeah. one question, sir. Yeah. Uh, this ink, ink go can work yeah. both on a ball, ballpoint pen and a gel pen, both? I will show you that. It, it can, yes. I will show you that coming up. Because uh, there, is a, there is a challenge in, a, uh, as you know, the Indian continent, few, few people are using ballpoint, few people are using gel, uh, gel pen. Okay. Yes. And, uh, and what I have understand that Ingo will very good with the uh, ballpoint pen. But my uh, question arises as I face some challenges with the sites, with their uh, V1, V2, V3 type of uh, you know, stain removers, uh, especially for the perk and a solvent kind of things, where this will not work on a gel pen. So gel pen, uh, because, yeah. Gel pen is uh, a difficult application. When we get yeah. into the discussion of ink, can I, can I push that off for an, uh, another slide that I want to show you? When we get, no, into, no please, please, when we get into gel ink, I will explain how to use that. Okay, that's, that's something- It is difficult. I will agree with you, uh, uh, Shashi. I will agree that it's it is a difficult application because gel ink um, has permanence to it. <laughs> so, yes, they have okay. some dye dye kind of fixture kind of things so that you know it's difficult to take it off. Yeah, we have dye strippers. We can help you there too. Okay, okay. Great. but uh, so we have two solvent based, shall we call them POG paint oil and grease removers, Targo EF and Inco. Uh, Inco. Uh, happens to have a different blend of solvents. Uh, Inco should be vacuumed before you put it into any hydrocarbon setting, but you can compensate for uh, any incompatibility by spraying the easy go on top of the Inco, okay? And this, then you can put it in the dry cleaning machine and it'll flush out nicely. The, uh, the easy go, by the way, uh, it is a leveling agent which helps to level out water stains as well. So uh, I think I forgot to say that before. Now let's move over to the green uh, laundry targo, which is a water-based POG. The one trick that uh, people who have tried to imitate laundry targo, they fail to realize the blend of uh, chemicals in there is such that when you put it on, like say Indian food or mustard or curry uh, or, or spaghetti sauce, if you let the chemical do the work for you, you don't have to do anything else. You put it on, you tamp it in there and you leave it till the next day or put it on in the morning to the stain, wash in the afternoon. It's had plenty of time to break down the 
oils, the cooking oils, the meat oils, um, any kind of oils, and you, the rest of the stain usually comes with it when you, when you wash. If you work on, let's say, India for curry or uh, uh, mustard, if you work on the spotting board with any other products uh, out, that are out in the market, competitive products out in the market, you're spending a lot of time doing, doing nothing except maybe three, four, five steps. In this case, it's one step. You put the laundry targo on, you tamp it in there, you wait, and the wash machine does the rest. A miracle product for uh, my favorite food, which is Indian food. So. <laughs> <laughs> one one question again here. One question no, again here. Yes. Uh, so this, as you know, Indian market very well because you yeah. belongs to India only. So you understand the you know Indian uh, clothings have uh -huh. you know problem of losing colors. Bly bleeding. Okay. Yes. Bleeding. Color bleeding. Yeah. The yes. exact word is color bleeding. So yes. my question here. Will it, you know, uh, when we're doing, uh, you know, taking this kind of action to the different kind of, you know, Indian clothes are lack of type of clothes, yeah. especially for the women, very less, very fast color bleeding. So I hope these these spotting will not affect the base color. The, the, while doing, um, the, the while function, doing that, the uh, the action of bleeding is sometimes caused by mechanical action. The the, yeah, the, that's, cause, that's true. the, that's, the that's causing true. of bleeding. The laundry targo by itself is very gentle. Now, most of the saris and things like that uh, the, uh, are going to be wet cleaned. Is that not correct? Yeah, wet cleaning or solvent cleaning. It can be oh. solvent cleaning also. Uh, not the perk, but with the multi-solvent, yes. Uh, like DF2000 DF or a Green Earth or a, you know, uh, 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 if I take uh, intense. Yeah, yeah this kind of uh, different uh, solvents. It'll go. It is in the market in, in Indian market with the you know uh, hydrocarbon machines, multi the funny, machines. The, the funny thing is, sometimes with uh, the, those garments that have a loose dye, you put it in the dry cleaning machine, it bleeds. You put it in the laundry, it bleeds. So mm -hmm. you just you're losing excess dye, but the basic color remains. And so sometimes, it, <laughs> sometimes it, it, it is a difficult situation. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not going to say that we never pull color, uh, but but we are as safe. If you if you are used to the sites products, I think you'll find out that we have a high degree. Yeah, of there there is there there is a lot of way we, we we try to even avoid if 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 we are losing colors base color from yeah. the spot. Uh, yeah. we refuse to we refuse to do that because it's you a always, customer thing. We cannot you, take risk on that. Sure, we cannot take actually, risk on that. Actually, you can we always. Still, you can always test. You can take a Q Yeah, we can test on the corners, but if yeah. suppose we are losing, then definitely we refuse to do that. Yeah, of Frankly course. Speaking, uh, of course. <laughs> that's, of that's, course. that's the best idea. There's there's something there, there are some things that you just um, can't process uh, effectively. Uh, and I don't know why these people buy those garments. <laughs> <laughs> that's in America too. <laughs> yeah, true, true. I will in say America, it's, 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 it's safe to say. Sorry, Randy. I, 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 yeah, I was just gonna say it's it's safe to say that you know we're industry leading uh, in terms of color safety. Um, yes. But at some point, if there's ever any question, we definitely recommend uh, testing first. Um, hey, no, uh, no, now, no product is gonna be 100% no, safe. Now, on now, in India, in India, the dry cleaners and you know laundry guys, they are uh, they have a process of dye fixers. They have some yeah. kind of chemical, local chemical dye fixers. Even sure. uh, it, it prevents to, you know, uh, bleeding from the garments, number one. And uh, one one more question into it uh, while we are discussing the spotting. Uh, uh, while doing the process, might be some worker has done some mistake, put two color uh, of clothes and the color transferred to the another clothes. You have yes. anything to remove that color from that? Uh, I can uh, show you that uh, in another slide, yes. Um, yeah, sorry, sorry. And now, now you can continue. No, no, My question is over. Don't be sorry. These are great questions, and uh, we will we will address those questions in other another slide. The slide I have is is not uh, an Indian garment, but it's an American garment that had uh, nylon in. It's a black and white, and it bled, but we yeah. were able to uh, we we were able to uh, fix it. So in this case, we can also do um, some of the other garments that you're talking about as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, 
our discussion of laundry targo that's our third pog it's water-based um and i will show you slides of the performance uh, of laundry targo and inco uh as we go as we go on further our next uh step as you see to the left where there's the the yellow uh oval is called bongo bongo is uh is for your wine and beverages, coffee, tannins. Um, and uh, then its, it's sister product would be QuickGo for proteins. So one is a yellow bottle and the other is a red bottle. Uh, QuickGo is red for color, color coded. You can't get it mixed up. Red for blood and body fluids. Yellow for yellow stains. Usually tannin stains like coffee and uh, is, is, uh, are, are, are tannin oriented. Tannin meaning Anything that grows from the ground. Tannins yeah. are, uh, are, are anything that grows from the ground, such as coffee, coffee bean, okay, uh, tea, uh, wine. In, in the case of wine, uh, do you ever come across wine stains in India? They don't drink too much. Yeah, wine. yeah, yeah. Few, few. Yes, we are, we, are <laughs> getting this, we are getting, we are getting few because now Indians are very, you know, used to have wines also. <laughs> things are changing. Yeah. Things are changing. <laughs> yeah, things are changing very fast. In my day, it used to be Arak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, now the wine is also very famous here with the Indian woman. You know, you find even those people who do not take whiskey or to the uh, alcohol, but they do take wine. Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> okay. So some of the some of the wines are high in sugar content. Um, and contain a uh, chemical called polyphenol. And this, this, what I'm going to tell you is counterintuitive. If you use QuickGo first on a, a heavy red wine stain, it breaks down the polyphenols, but QuickGo is a protein. Now the polyphenols are, um, are, are, are able to break down very easily with a protein remover like QuickGo, and if you do that first and get the polyphenols out of the way, then switch to bongo as a secondary. In this case, it works extremely well. Uh, if you start with bongo and you still have a pink stain left, you haven't done well with the polyphenols and you haven't done well with the dye. So you can switch back to quick go, but it, it helps to use quick go first on heavy, uh, heavy wine concentrations. Quick go, then switch to bongo. Am I making sense? Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Thanks. I understood. Okay. So any if I if I see a wine stain, I am uh, and if it's just an ordinary, not a heavy wine stain, I'll, I'll reach for bongo. And sometimes hydrogen peroxide is the last step to take out the residual pink. Uh, because the residual, once the tannins are released and you have a, a little pink stain left, that's uh, that's just dye from the wine. So if you have a dilute hydrogen peroxide, that'll take care of the last traces. Um, but if it's a heavy wine stain that doesn't want to move, uh, you switch to Quicko and then go to Bongo. Okay. The fifth step, so we did step number one, uh, soil, oil, and grime. Step number two, POG. Step number three, tannin. Step number four, protein. If uh, if you still have the stain left, you've taken out all the possible ingredients in the stain. All you have left is a dye problem. And so I offer you to the two left would be two kinds of oxygen bleaches. Hydrogen peroxide, since it's liquid and it's easy to use on the spotting board, but it, may, it takes time. It takes five, five, 10, sometimes 30 minutes. And sometimes if you hang, hang a uh, a garment up in the boiler room that's been treated with hydrogen peroxide. It, it's enough heat to help the um, hydrogen peroxide to take out the residual stain. Sodium percarbonate, on the other hand, is a powdered oxygen bleach. Uh, you may call, you may re recall sodium perborate, sodium percarbonate. They're all good oxygen bleaches that you need primarily to use as soak, soaking in hot water or, or depending on what the garment can take. Um, when you're soaking with sodium perborate or sodium percarbonate, if you add an ounce or two of right go to say, if you have five gallons of water and put in maybe a quarter cup of sodium percarbonate, 
add two or three ounces of RICO as a lubricant because it, beco it becomes a, actually a booster to the sodium percarbonate. It swells the fiber so that the bleach gets in and does a faster job. So RICO can be a, lu a lubricant in your soaking process. Um, I want to address uh, one more bleach. No, I'll, I'll go back to quick go uh, protein remover. We have one more uh, protein remover that you should be aware of that uh, helps you when it comes to large area protein stains. What I am referring to is sometimes people have pets that urinate on a, on a bed and they'll bring it to you to the dry cleaner and expect them to get it out. I don't expect the, the spotter to use Quicko on the spotting board and steam that whole thing down because number one, it, it smells so bad. The protein. <laughs> but it, it, it's horrible. <laughs> and yeah. So you can take Sogo number one, which is a powdered enzyme. It's actually, it's an enzyme blend that's designed specifically for stain removal. It's not just an enzyme detergent. There are many enzyme detergents out there. This is high temperature resistant. It won't die at 110 degrees Fahrenheit like some uh, enzymes do. It will, you can actually have, it's effective uh, optimally 100 to 135, but you can go to 145 if, 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 if you so desire or if your temperature is set that way. It, um, and it is very, very effective as a stain remover for large area protein stains, again, efficiency to avoid having working on the spotting board. If I have a pair of plants with uh, pants with blood or urine on it, I don't want you to spot it on the spotting board. Just create a two, three gallons of hot water, put in one or two ounces of right go and maybe uh, a, a tablespoon of uh, Sogo number one and the smell will be taken care of because it, it, it attacks the organic matter. I, it digests it. It puts it down the drain where it belongs. And that pair of pants that you soak and then you wet clean, once you put it on the topper, it's not gonna smell. If you just process uh, a pair of pee pants, urine pants with uh, something on the spotting board, you may see the yellow stain disappear, but when, when, you wash, uh, when you wash it and then you put it on the topper, if that has not taken out the entire urine stain, it'll smell and it'll smell the whole dry cleaning plant up. So oh. we, want to, we want to take that particular application and either put it in a bucket with Sogo number one, or we want to put it in the washer, either way. It, it's uh, um, an excellent way to improve efficiency with uh, protein stains. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Everybody okay yeah. with that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we are, we are, we are okay with this. I, I meant to I meant to talk to you about Sogo one when we were talking about proteins, but Quick Go is for the spotting board for small air, small spots, and you can take out blood and stuff with Quick Go. But if you get into an old set blood, it's much more efficient to instead of working on the spotting board. It's very hard to do. It's already been set. Uh, you can re you can release that blood stain with Sogo number one in a soak. So like a, like a, you know, uh, from the operation theater kind of an yeah, hospital. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 from ICU, the urine part and everything. So exactly. we, I understand that. Exactly. We have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can understand this. Understood, understood. Okay, now, Randy, if you can switch to um, the, um, the right go photo, we're going to backtrack just a little bit uh, and go to soil oil and grime. So soil oil. Uh, sure, Bob, I want to just take one moment to pause before we oh. move on to the kind of next phase and pictures and specific stains and products um, and just talk about um, product mix first for a second here. Um, so uh, out of Dubai, specifically um, throughout the Middle East um, and much of the world, uh, and I, and I want to talk about POGs for a second, specifically, um, chlorinated traditional POGs are king, uh, traditional POGs that contain chlorinated solvents 
are uh, still in in wide usage. Uh, however, especially in the United States um, and and Europe, I think to a large extent as well, um, the traditional chlorinated POGs uh, used in coordination with PERC um, are becoming much less popular as uh, the general mood uh, switches to more one uh, that is concerned with eco-friendliness and worker friendliness. Uh, so on Bob's picture of the spotting board here, we have two products that, uh, that, that kind of jump out, the Targo EF uh, and the Laundry Targo. So where historically there would be one product there, the Targo Dry, uh, in the United States now specifically, um, we really focus much more on two chlorinated solvent free, uh, eco-friendly, worker-friendly products, the Targo EF, environmentally friendly on the dry cleaning side and the laundry Targo uh, on the laundry side. Um, these products are as effective as the Targo dry, uh, but they might require a little bit more time. So they'll remove the same sorts of stains that the Targo dry will, um, but they might require a little bit more contact time with the stains than the Targo dry might. Um, it took about, I don't know, we rolled out laundry Targo in the mid nineties. Uh, so we've been talking about these products for 25, 30 years, trying to convince the market that they should be moving away from traditional chlorinated solvent based POGs and towards these new eco-friendly, worker friendly um, POGs. They're safer for the environment. They're safer for the workers. Uh, they're safer from the liability um, point of view. And we're in an interesting place here, introducing the line into India, uh, where we don't have the historic relationship with the Targo Dry that we do say in the Middle East. It probably makes sense that rather than introducing Targo Dry, which is more difficult from a distribution point of view, which obviously is important to both A.O. Wilson and Wotec, um, it's much easier to move the non-chlorinated, non-hazardous products like Targo EF and Laundry Targo, as well as easier to store, uh, than it is to move the hazardous product Targo Dry. Um, so when we're going in and making new placements, when we're talking to end users about the products for the first time, when they're being introduced to A.O. Wilson products, I would recommend rather than placing a Targo dry say, I would recommend placing a Targo EF for the use in the dry cleaning in a dry environment uh, and the laundry Targo for use in coordination with wet cleaning and uh, laundry. So anytime you're working on the wet side, I would recommend introducing those products. Randy, before you switch the slide, can I uh, just add one more thing? Um, I completely uh, glossed over Yellow Go a dye stripper. Uh, Yellow Go is uh, now on the two left side, um, hydrogen peroxide and sodium perborate, they're oxidizing agents. They, they are color safe bleaches. Uh, whereas Yellow Go is a reducing bleach, um, it's opposite, but it, it works uh, as a stripper. Um, and it's, it's designed for when uh, you have a residual ink stain that you can't get out. Uh, you've reduced the ink stain to a shadow of its former self. Then you can use the yellow gold on, on a white shirt, let's say. If you have a colored shirt, you need to test because the job of the yellow gold is, a, uh, is to take dye. It's our job to dilute it. You can control it through dilution. Uh, cooler temperatures, it make it less aggressive. Uh, and... Uh, uh, lesser soak times, faster soak times, uh, you can use the yellow go to sometimes take out uh, residual dyes on a colored shirt, but mostly it's used for white, white shirts, ink stains, uh, dye stains. Um, uh, if you have a load of white shirts that somehow uh, a red napkin got tossed in and everything becomes pink, 
You can use yellow go in the, in the washer. You can use it in a bucket or you can use it on the spotting board. Um, if you need to know more about yellow go, which you will, our website, alwilson.com, it has five excellent short videos uh, on different, different applications uh, that um, will be able to help you. And we also show you, we'll, ask, we'll show you in one, one frame, uh, one, one uh, video, uh, two different kinds of uh, blue stripes. Uh, we'll show failure on one in the same bath and success on the other. So, and we'll discuss that. And we'll discuss also potentially how to bring it back uh, through neutralizing in another bath um, with a, an alkalized solution. Anyway, that's available to you through alwilson.com. And now we can switch back to uh, uh, slide number three. Okay, let's uh, go back to our discussion on soil, oil, and grime. Um, this is the uh, water-based product that uh, uh, we were talking uh, about before, Shashi. The, uh, the, um, the RICO, as I said, was a deep penetrating agent. This is a wedding gown that had black all the way around. And when, when the product first came out, I actually took this picture. I, I wanted to show how surprised I was at how quickly the black was removed from the area that now shows white. <laughs> so yeah, I sprayed yeah. it, I tamped it, and the lady was lady was watching me. She said, I see it uh, bubbling up and moving. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Rand. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I see it moving. Why don't you take that hose on the left and uh, let's just uh, flush out and see what happens, see how much has re released. The whole thing became white. And I said, oh my goodness. And she said, oh my goodness. <laughs> that was my introduction to, uh, to RightGo. And uh, I've, been, I've been showing pictures. I've been showing that product in that similar situation. And uh, uh, people are getting, it, it's our fastest moving product. So I think you will be very happy um, to show your customers. You can actually demonstrate it uh, very successfully on soil, oil, and grime. It lifts it just, just like you see right there. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Look forward, look forward to it. Yeah. Also, it, it accelerates very nicely with a puff of steam. If you can take the steam gun and control it so that you get a light fog, once you've sprayed the, the, uh, the RICO, it just, it, it, it uh, accelerates it to the nth degree. Um, and, um, you can demonstrate that nicely too. Very handy product to carry with you uh, to, to demonstrate because it's, it's instant um, in most cases. Um, okay, we can go to uh, uh, number four, number four. Anybody ever seen anything like this? <laughs> yeah, sweat oh. mark. All the time, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's, it's a sweat yeah. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. In America, I mean, uh, the problem, well, in any place, uh, the, the problem with the sweat mark is the deodorant, because the, 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 you can either dissolve a stain or you can lubricate it out, okay? Deodorant is very hard to, it doesn't dissolve, okay? So what we need to do is to consider lubrication and mechanical action as a, as a first step. First of all, you, you, you spray the right go, right go becomes your lubricant. You can take your, your brush and begin to tamp it. That helps to break down the deodorant. You can take the steam gun and begin to fl flush it as much as possible. And then once you get rid of any semblance of deodorant, then you can begin, you, then you can put the right go on and, and, uh, and wash it. See. Deodorant is designed to keep body fluids away from the fabric. But once the day goes on and the deodorant breaks down, then the, um, then the fabric gets wet with perspiration as well as broken down deodorant. So then the deodorant becomes your enemy as you try to remove it from the fabric itself. So right go is the answer. Uh, and we can show you the um, corrected uh, photo of it on our next slide. 
But um, if if we you, go ahead, Brandy, and, and you can switch it. But if, if you've gone uh, as far as you can, like with a silk blouse, sometimes you lose color under the armpit. You can't replace that. If, if, if the lady comes to you with a red blouse and it's already pink under the armpit, you can't make it red again. <laughs> it's, it's, Obviously, it's, but this, yeah. this product right go is working very good on the sweat mark or uh, deodorant. Right. It, it is, but it's, it's also a mechanical action. Be, be very clear that the mechanical uh -huh. action and, and the steam have to happen it, especially be, to break down the deodorant. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, we can go to uh, 6A. This is a wedding gown that um, uh, sometimes in the States they have what they call barnyard weddings and it's on the, the, the floor is covered with straw and the, the dirt gets on the gown like that. Um, it's just loose dirt. Um, it's very simple to take uh, right go and water, hang that thing up. I would never work on the spotting board in, on a wedding gown until I actually soak it in water and right go, unless it's a dry clean only uh, gown. And in that case, we have exceptions as well. But uh, in this case, and you can take this, uh, you can take the next slide, Brandy. Uh, in this case, if you soak it with, um, Right uh, with Ryko, and it should come like that when you dry, when you wash it, when you wet clean it. And you can see the Ryko bottle on the side there. That's uh, that is the product that was used to take all that loose soil out. Now, yeah. when, you, when we s switch to the next slide, which is ground in, this is really, really ground in, okay. The first wedding gown that we showed you, it was loose. This is going to take a little bit more effort. So what we have here, when I soak the gown in the right go, the, the brown area will be loosened up very nicely. What will remain after one hour of soaking will be the black area, which is car grease, because the gown has been dragged through the parking lot, okay? And the double area, uh, the seam area, is also going to have a little bit of residue left. In order to get out as much as you can in the first soak, I would encourage you not only to put right go, but to also put a little bit of laundry targo. And it would also help if you pre-treat, you don't have to scrub it, but if you pre-treat the entire area with both right go and in the heavy black part, you put uh, a little bit of just a laundry targo let it sit for a half hour before you make the, the, the soak. And a lot of these gowns are polyester. Uh, I mean, I know in India they put on these saris, which are sometimes silk, sometimes crepe, and they drag the, on the ground in the same way. Most of these, they, they can be wet clean. Uh, if, if, uh, if it's a dry clean only, sometimes you can actually use wet side treatment on the hem where the soil is and let it, uh, let it flow, then rinse it out, let it dry, level it with yes. the ease to go, and then dry clean. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So soil like this is more permeable with right go than anything else. Uh, and certainly when it's mixed with the water, you could use the right go and the laundry targo together. Um, Sometimes if there's heavy grass stains, you could put uh, right go laundry targo and Sogo one because Sogo one breaks down grass stains very nicely. You may ask why. Um, grass is uh, probably a tannin because it's from the ground. Why do you use a protein remover to break down uh, a grass stain? And I am told by our lab that chlorophyll is surrounded by a skin, which is uh, which is a protein. Hence, when you use a protein remover like Sogo number one in your mix, grass stains are broken down because the uh, protein in the this, in this cell sac uh, it dissolves first and then the rest is put down the drain. Very simple. <laughs> so, uh, let's go to our next slide. This is that same gown. Uh, you can see the touch-up, uh, the brown is all gone from the left 
side, the heavy grease that was near the hem is gone, and also the double layer. And this is not magic. You have to have a little bit of a mechanical action to take that out. But when you soak a gown like that, it becomes so much easier to work it on the spotting board than to, if you, if you go right from the get-go on the spotting board, you're gonna to have to work much harder. Soaking is the key. Uh, okay, let's switch to eight. Baseball pants, cricket pants, they all get red clay, right? Your bowling area has a red, a strip of red clay, is that correct? In cricket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so, yes. And uh, very often the pants, you want to wear what, nice white pants when you play cricket, and uh, you'll get uh, a mud stain like this. So in this case, uh, we use the right go. And it, it's once, if the game happened last night, and it's a brand new pair of pants. It's very simple. You spray the right go, you tamp it, and you wash it. Next slide, please, Randy. And you can see that after washing, it, it all came out. However, if, yeah. if, the, if the stain is old, if the, if the pants have been washed over and over again and never treated with right go, it's no longer dirt. It's pigment from the clay that's there. And we need to use yellow go, the dye stripper, as a consideration. We have our next slide, please. This is uh, an well, this is the start, of, this is the start of a discussion on incremental. So yes, yes, yes. Actually, we will help you with your uh, your questions. Of course, on yes. this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, please. Now, this is a very easy application because number one, it's uh, fresh ink. It's, it's not old, it's not set, it's not a big blob of ink, it's surface ink. Um, so we took a lab coat and we marked it up with four different pens. There, there are basically two categories of ink. There is water-based ink <clears throat> and there is solvent-based ink. And within each category, there's many, many kinds of formulas. So what we wanted to do here is to show you that, that right gold, the soil, oil, and grime product that yeah. number, we showed you in the number one step, the right go, what, what it will do when we wash the, when we spray the uh, gown area, this, this stained area, take away the pens, spray it, and then wash it. If you can go to the next slide, please. You can see that the right go itself, the, the grease removal ability in the right go, it took out the two pens that are water-based, the two inks that yes. are water. We still yes. need something for the, the dry side inks. And that would probably be ink go in this case, and maybe a little steam. Or if you, if you still have uh, a little stain left, you could use yellow go because the garment is white. Um, because the residual stain that doesn't move with a POG is no longer ink, it's dye from the ink, okay? You have removed the oils, now what you have left is dye. In this case, maybe because we didn't put the inko on, the inko would take it, but if you still had something left, you would use the dye stripper. We go to the okay. next one. Okay. Uh, this is a very heavy jacket. It's a winter, yeah. uh, uh, winter jacket, very thick. Yeah. That spot is not just that spot, it's deeply in there. There's a lot, a lot of ink in that spot, okay? Yeah. Now, in, in this case, uh, most people would just throw up their hands because if you start, if you start working with that, you get a lot of spreading. And once you yeah. get a lot of spreading, with most ink removers or most POGs, it's, it's going to dry. And once it dries, you have a big mess, OK? So first of all, what we want to do is take a towel and put it in, inside the sleeve to soak up as much as we can. Yeah, yeah. 
Secondly, our go-to ink remover would be Inkgo. And what we, would, what we will do is apply Inkgo very heavily in, in that whole area. Once we apply Inkgo, we don't touch it with the brush. We don't do anything. We just let the ink go penetrate deeply, okay? Now, if we just leave it, the ink go will evaporate. So within an hour or so after letting the ink go penetrate, we need to cover that ink go to, to prevent it from evaporation. Once it evaporates, it becomes very hard to uh, remove the whole ink stain. So when I was talking to you about POGs, remember laundry targo, I was telling you, it doesn't, uh, if you put it on a, a curry stain and leave it or mustard stain and leave it, it won't evaporate. It stays wet for a long period of time. And in this case, we're going to add laundry targo right on top of the area that you flooded with Inco to keep, well, to number one, to keep the Inco wet. Number two, to add a secondary product to help break down the stain. And in this case, if this is a dry side ink, the, the Inco will help to, to remove it. If it's a wet side ink, the, the Rondi Targo will help to break it down as well. And that's your solution right there. If that were a gel pen, that's exactly what I would do. I would put the Inco on first, and then the Rondi Targo on second, and let, let it let it sit overnight, if you will, and then wet clean it or wash it the next day uh, with, uh, with detergents. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Now, gel ink uh, may need additional attention. As a matter of fact, this one also needed additional washing because it was, there was so much in there. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, it, but we, the secondary wash was just with laundry targo. The first wash was with Inco and laundry targo. Uh, okay. And uh, we can go to the uh, corrected picture, uh, Randy. Okay. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Gone. Good. See what happens. Um, some people like to take a, a, a plastic bag and once they've treated the garment with Inco and Laundry Targo, they, they're not, they, they want to keep it, they want to make sure if they leave it for the weekend, let's say, that it stays wet. So they take the thing and, and they put it in the plastic bag with a twist tie, they call it a twist tie, uh, to seal the bag. And uh, this way it definitely stays wet. But e even if you don't use that, you can touch the area that you, that you uh, that you treated before before you wash it, and it'll be slightly damp, which means that the chemicals have begun to have kept working for you all night. It's your it, it, the, tell the dry cleaner it's your best employee because he doesn't require any overtime. <laughs> he doesn't put the chemical on and go. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, and it's most my my one Bob my one question yeah. my, Bob my one question. Yeah, uh, you uh, as you 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 spend a lot of time in India. There is sugar. Uh, you call it sugar syrup. Sugar. Syrup, yeah, sugar cane. You know? Sugar cane syrup. Yeah, not not sugar cane. You know, you know, you know the sweets of India like rasagulla. Oh yeah, yes. 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 Dip in. In, a, in in Indian marriage, a lot of you know uh, this kind of sweets used by the people to serve people right and yes. it came out it came out to the fabric like sarees lehengas yes. like female female wear sugar syrup and what they what they do is okay they clean with the water or something at that time and they put it back in the store uh, in their you know uh, wardrobes okay. okay after say after 15 days say after 20 days say after month it shows up okay they, okay this is the stain let it give it to the dry cleaner and yeah. you know the sugar syrup develop some kind of you know uh, fungus kind of thing that it will you know go uh, I can say break the fiber and you know something like that happen. Do you have yeah. something you know remove the sugar syrup uh, stains? Are you from sure? The are you sure? Are you sure it's this, the sugar uh, that broke it down, or was it the chemical that was used to try and remove the tannin from the sugar? Uh, if, if you, it, it, 
I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. It might be the it might be the chemical that was used to remove the to try and remove the stain, because sugar by itself uh, should have no uh, harmful effect chemically uh, on the fab on fiber. But uh, but, we could but you know that this sugar was uh, it's cooked cooked with yeah. the, you know water. Sugar yeah. syrup is cooked in the water, so there is there is a very different kind of stains it, develop. It, Caramelized, yeah. That's yes, it's a caramelized sugar, yeah. and it's remained on the clothes for many time. You know, yeah. if you go to the marriages or any function or any parties, uh, uh, you find the ten uh, percent of the people have this kind of stain. So I, I have not had experience with that kind of stain, but I would just from a, a intellectual, uh, just analyzing it, um, sugar is a tannin, and yeah. Uh, your, your sweets all have oils uh, and ghee and stuff like that in them. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, so, yes, yes. It's oh, a mix of from that understanding. Oil. From that understanding, I would put our our tannin remover on, and I would put mm -hmm. the laundry targo on top of that to keep it wet, and mm -hmm. then I would let it sit overnight and wash or wet clean. Let me try. Uh, let me try. There is a uh, you know. I would like to know because in the exhibition, let me try it, and I'll definitely come with the result for this. I would like to know your result. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> the other thing I would I would consider doing is putting a, a Sogo number one in the in the in the soak as well, in case there are any proteins in there. Um, Sogo number one has more than protein remover in it. It has good, it has good detergency and and um, and, and good ability to to remove stain. So you might have good luck with that. Just consider that as a third. So we'll definitely, go, definitely. So I'll now, try and I'll try. Uh, try bongo covered by its laundry targo. And if you're going to wash it, add a little bit of soga one. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I'll, I'll try and I'll come back with this. Fine, thank oh, you. Very good, very good. Uh, okay, let's take number 14, I guess, Randy. Oh, did we show 13? No, oh, number 14. Okay. This is 14. Now, okay. this is a big stain. This was a stain that was in the pocket area. Yeah, the, all the pens, you know, if you forget yeah. to cap it up or something, <laughs> it will come out like this. <laughs> yes. This was all, this was far, this concentration was high up. So yeah. we, we, we uh, found out that it was water based ink. And so, the solution with uh, water-based ink, number one, we, we spray it with Ryko, and number two, we cover the whole thing with laundry targo. Ryko helps to swell the fiber and the laundry targo gets in there and does a better job because of the swelling factor as a lubrication. Laundry targo also has filled with lubricants, but Ryko does some, some things to help bring it to the top uh, surface. So what happened? is the laundry targo begin to drip. So did the ink. And when it drips to the bottom of the gown like that, it's no longer ink in its original form. It's, it's pigmented laundry targo. It's a laundry targo that has inherited uh, the color of the ink. So at this point, we need to realize that this is not a big problem in, in terms of water-based ink. We just need to wash it with good detergents and hot water. And if there is any little tiny residual yellowing, um, bluing, we need to treat that with a little inko. So if you go to the corrected picture, that would be good, Randy. Okay. Oh, wow. we, have a, we have a happy lady there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, good. I will, I will tell you that, um, the it, it, once you wash it, there will be a little bit of blue left. The, the the yellow go will be essential to use on the spotting board, and you can steam it out very easily. You could steam the residual blue out very easily with the with the yellow go. But if you put yellow go on the on the on the on the jacket, you need to re you need to rewash it because what goes in must come out. Yellow go is an acid, and you need to make sure that it's removed from the from the uh, garment. Bob, one question, one question again. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, why, uh, when, we, when we wash this kind of, you know, cloth and uh, we should take it out from the washing machine 
and we do the if some blue remain then we do the process on a wet yes coat. yeah yeah you do the process not, yeah we should not dry we should not dry it then do it na correct directly because if you dry it then it's then you are you are in, fix it you are setting this you are setting the residual stains yes so we have to do the process while it is wet that is correct right thank you um number 16 randy this is a problem that is created by the spotter of i'm going from upper right to lower right to to the left um this was created by the spotter uh because he or she used steam on a garment and did not vacuum and flush properly before dry cleaning so this is what you call redeposition redeposition is the impurities that may reside in the solvent itself in the dry cleaning machine uh all are attracted to the water spot and when when that happens it's what they call redeposition because all that those impurities are redepositing on the gown itself or on the fabric itself so when we discover that problem we take the gown put it on the spotting board and we spray our solvent based soil oil and grime product which would be easy go we spray it and put it you can see on the second picture down from the the, the top right you can see the stain still the easy go has broken it down a little bit with tamping we might also want to add some targo ef in the areas in that area because what is redeposition redeposition is oily and it's grime and it's soil that happened to redeposit so then we do that and we we dry clean and we see the result on the left okay so easy go is a multifunctional pro product for for soil removal on the dry side we are switching to dry side at this point okay um number 17 yeah there we go this is a problem that was caused by a black jacket and perspiration uh and it's a dry clean only so when the lady was wearing it she perspired and then she perspired into the jacket which caused the some of the black to come on to it's especially visible on the upper right hand uh part of the dress do you see that everybody yeah 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 i mean yeah you see it okay yeah, yeah there's some simple. black black on the side yeah yeah it's very simple easy go becomes our color repair product easy go is a leveling agent easy go is the uh, is for uh, redeposition easy go uh, also becomes a a, a moisture re remover and color repair so you spray it tamp it throw it right in the dry cleaning machine after letting it sit 10 15 minutes and you can see that the black has been flushed out in the dry cleaning machine without any problem on the on the bottom uh uh picture yeah yeah we can see yes understood how about uh, switching to slide number 9 Now, uh, Shashi, this is what I was talking about. Uh, uh, you were talking about uh, saris and things like that. Uh, yeah, color. It, it's a similar situation where the the, the American manufacturers, the manufacturers, they're not necessarily at all American. They they have this stretchy nylon thread. Uh, it could be it could be polyurethane thread as well. But anyway, the thread does not. Um, the 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 dye does not uh stick to the thread very well and the manufacturers uh, the ladies they they like to buy these these dresses because they're they're nice and clingy and it shows the it shows their figure but it it also bleeds <laughs> very easily <laughs> so yeah. uh, the yeah. the manufacturers like to to make these so that they're stretchy and it shows the body but the the, the dyes don't hold very well and you get this bleeding going from the black to the to the white, white. area 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next picture is the back of the dress. It's even worse. Should be there. Yeah, there you go. Now, oh. yeah, if oh. you start if you start working this on the spotty board, it's, you can argue. It, it, it'd be horrible. So I I would suggest that there's there's probably two ways to do it. If it happened dry side, you can take easy go and spray the whole thing down, and uh, and and tamp it. <clears throat> But it, that's a lot of work too. But, or you could spray the whole thing down and just put it in the dry cleaning machine. If it's perk, it'll help a lot. If it's sensing, it, it probably will help. If it's just hydrocarbon, you might have to do it two or three times. There's another way to do it. You can go to the, uh, uh, the next slide. There's another way to do it, which is wet side. This, most people say, most pundits would say, if it happened dry side, you can continue dry side, meaning spray attempt, and then you have to work with the easy go on the dry side, all right? There's another way to do it. it, it, it you can create a bucket of, of uh, hot water, then you can put easy go in. You have to put quite a bit in because you have to make it milky white emulsion. So if say three gallons of water, you need at least three cups of easy go, okay? Four gallons of water, four cups of easy go. It has to become milky white. If it's not milky white, it's not going to work or it'll take, it'll take more uh, headache on your part <laughs> to make it work. So put in the right amount of easy go, put the dress in. Now you can see that when you put the dress in, it begins to bleed immediately. But there will be no redeposition because the black that is bleeding out is held in suspension. So when you let this sit for one hour, we can, you can check it. You can, you can take a wooden stick and stir it once in a while so that all areas are covered. When you finish soaking it uh, with this color repair solution, which is just easy going water, you can rinse it in, in plain water and hang it to dry, or you can give it a couple of quick twists uh, in, in, a, in an extractor, not more than a minute or two, because if you give it a lot of time to extract, what will happen is the black will continue bleeding out again onto the white. So very, if you're going to do that, just a one minute extract, and then hang dry the rest of the way, or you could put it on the Susie, uh, to, to dry 30% and hang dry the rest of the way. But uh, the, the gown was corrected in, uh, as in the pictures that you and will see. What, uh, Go ahead. And what would be the temperature of the water? If you're probably, de depending, if it's a silk or something, it's going to be probably no, no more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. You, you don't want to okay. shrink it. So in oh, that yeah. case, 100 to 120. So lukewarm to hot. Okay. Okay. Depending on fabric. Okay. 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 Got it. Got it. Let me go to the next picture. That's the corrected gown. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, oh. Go to the next picture, Randy. That's the back of the dress. Oh, yes. Front, front 100% dress. corrected. Remember that? <laughs> Remember how bad it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's switch to uh, uh, blood removal and our next one. So this was a dress that was worn by a bride that got into a car accident. <laughs> she survived, but um, she took her hand and she wiped it down on the right uh, on the right side of the gown, her right side of the gown. But the the, the facial area bled heavily on on the top part. Um, if I were to take Quicko and use it on the spotting board or ammonia or any any other protein, it would take hours to remove this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a warm water bath with Sogo number one, as you can see the picture on the right with the red Sogo number 
number one. I'm going to soak it. I begin soaking it, and uh, probably this is a poly gown. So 120 degree water is fine. The area where she took her hand and rubbed the hand on the gown is, is not very heavy. That will come out maybe in five, 10 minutes. You could, see, you could lift it up and you'll see, oh, that's white, that's done. But, but your, your, your gown in the top of the area is extremely thick. And to have it saturated that with that much blood, there's a lot of blood there. So we want to probably soak it for an hour and take a look at it. Uh, the water will turn brown, no doubt. And you might have to do a double bath or a secondary bath, but that, that is the corrected gown on the right-hand side after soaking with SOGO one and wet cleaning. Okay, so SOGO number one is designed for heavy so, uh, protein applications, grass stains, um, cat urine, dog urine, uh, uh, all those kinds of uh, things that you don't want to touch on the spotting board. It, okay. And it's designed to make the spotter's job more efficient or the performance of the spotter more efficient. Okay, easy go. Uh, let's do the next slide, which is mildew. You know, uh, one thing more. Uh, yes. Can I? Yes, yes, please, uh, please. You know, Since you have shown, you know, the, uh, to remove the blood stains, you know, Stogo one. Yeah. So can this also be used for the medical purpose by the hospitals also? Absolutely. Or some other... Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, they can add it to the washer. Um, I mean, hospital linens, uh, they may get, uh, usually they have their temperature very, very high, right? Uh, hospital washes. Is it correct? Yeah, yeah, but uh, I know in the states point, that. Go ahead, please. In my experience, in my experience, uh, there is one solution machine for this, where the temperature is not there. We should not give temperature to blood. I think if I what I have understand in 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 general here. Sure, it should be about one hundred and twenty Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah, that's not okay. super hot, but you don't want to get it one hundred and sixty-five. You know, yeah, uh, I'm talking Fahrenheit, so. Uh, I, we can I, understand it's a 50 percent of celsius we are working yeah. on a celsius okay yeah. i know you are <laughs> it's a 50 percent uh, i guess 60 degree temperature you're talking about 50 to 60 degree temperature to it celsius okay. so th this this uh is outdoor uh cushion uh cover outdoor cushion cover furniture furniture cover the, mm -hmm. the the left one is full of dirt from the outdoors but it's also full of mildew from staying wet uh, if I could enlarge that, you'll see the mildew spots. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I'm yeah. I'm going to use I'm going to use Sogo number one because it, it digests the or the mildew, but it all and move over to the right, uh, Randy. It also takes out the 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 soil oil. Uh, I mean, it also takes out the soil and the mildew in one uh, in one wash, but. Because I'm using right go with that, maybe just a couple ounces of right go as I wash it, the, the soil is lifted very nicely as well. Okay, yeah, right go is always added to soaks. Right go, you, right go you can use by itself as a collar cuff, but put it in the bucket or put it in the washer and, it, and you'll see really good stuff happening. This, 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 this fabric is what? Like, uh, it's fabric like is coarse. It's very coarse. It's outside furniture designed for uh, designed for heavy use on the outside. It's not uh, uh, thick, thick, thick fabric. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a cushion cover. Yeah, yeah, I understand. It's a cushion cover. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's switch to the next one. Now, mildew uh, traditionally, if you have a a, a white uh, lab coat or something, people uh, uh, people always, uh, well, they, they're tempted to use uh, chlor 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 chlorine bleach, yes. Um, but when you have a color like this, you know, well, the problem with chlorine bleach is, yes, it will take the stain out, but <clears throat> as quickly as it's taking the stain out, 
is decomposing the tensile strength of the of the fiber. Yeah, yeah. it it become yellowish, then brown, then you know, it's yeah, burning yeah. the fabric. But oh, I very very thin, very thin. Yeah, um, yeah. You can go to some uh, um, some uh, not high class hotels, but you can go to some cheaper hotels, and yeah. the, the, the sheets and the and the and the towels will be very the towels will be very rough. And the sheets wow. will be very thin, so very thin and very yellowish. Uh, yes, and that's well. We uh, we can also take the yellowish out with another product, but uh, it's in, to neutralize the chlorine. But yeah. uh, I'm, I can talk about that later. But, but this is a Sogo one application. It takes out the mildew without damaging the uh, black color. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Let's see. The next one is a uh, is what we consider a common soak. This uh, this is a mix I alluded to before. Uh, yeah, it yeah. works very well uh, all together. The right go your soil oil and grime, your laundry targo for the heavier grease that might be on the on the on the hem of the gown, and the sogo one for grass stains and any other potential protein stains that might be on. It is a good blend. Uh, the right go is neutral. The laundry targo is slightly alkali, very close to neutral. And the Sogo one is slightly, is a buffered alkalinity. So they work hand in hand very, very nicely. Uh, uh, and if, if somebody's having issues with uh, heavy, heavy um, soil on the bottom of a sari or a gown, that's, that's my, that, that would be my solution to that. Right, great. Okay. Uh, gown restoration. <clears throat> the gown on the left is the same as the gown on the right. <laughs> the gown on the left was uh, put away for a long time and the stain on the gown on the left was not taken out before it was put away. So you have two difficult scenarios here. The stain on the gown, which has been old, very, very old, is very, stains are hard to get out. And the oxidation of the gown of the white, uh, that should be white, the gown is yellowed over age. We have, for the stain on the, uh, the center of the back, you would treat that with Ryko. Right, Ryko is a go-to product for, uh, we're going to wet clean this gown uh, as well, but First of all, we're going to treat the, the stain with right go. And you can tamp it in, you can work it. Uh, you might also treat it with a little laundry targo before you soak it. Then we are going to develop a soak to whiten the gown, uh, a, a soak with a product called D R O G O, Drogo, part B. Drogo, D-R-O-G-O. You can find all of these products listed on our website uh, under products. Um, you go on the website and you'll see a, a listing of, of, of links on the top. One of the links says products. You go to that and you will see that. And you click on Drogo. Uh, Bob, so this is, uh, this, is, this is definitely one of our more specialty products and applications. Yes here i yes. don't know how often this is going to come into play um you know this is almost like a 2.0 or, or or third level uh, uh, it's product. So I, yeah. I don't think we can spend too much okay. time other than just knowing that it exists okay the, it exists also for your um neutralizing of chlorine product anybody who's got a, a, a chlorine stain that's a, a yellow uh, over chlorinated um, shirt or, or sheets or whatever. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of, lot of customers have this, this kind of complaints that, you know, they are giving to some dhobi kind of people, you know, they are make it yellowish, white shirt has never become. So just if you do it in a, it, a one it, one, It's a possible. whitener, you can neutralize chlorine with it as well. Wow, great. It okay. will work, definitely, it will definitely work, in a, especially in the white, white part. People are, few people are very interested in white. Okay. Uh, so it may be useful to you. Um, I don't know if you're going to have uh, restoration issues like this, but certainly with chlorine, uh, I know India uses a lot of chlorine. So <laughs> in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a hotel industry, in whites, people yeah. are using chlorine. They I know. Use 
I know, I know. So if they have an issue, they can they can buy the Drogo B from you, Drogo Part B, and uh, they can neutralize the chlorine stain. Oh, great. All right. So uh, that's pretty much it for right now. Um, okay. I will just uh, recap on protein and tannin. Uh, tannins are acid by nature, and proteins are alkali by nature. Uh, so you should be uh, aware of that. Our protein is buffered. Uh, so that if you're working with a silk, sometimes when you get a heavily heavy protein uh, on a silk, like a ammonia, it will react with the silk and leave a yellow ring or a yellow mark. You're breaking down the silk because if you think of it, the silkworm is an animal. It's making, this, it's making the fiber. And uh, if you have a protein remover, you are breaking the animal fiber down with the protein remover. So when right. you use our protein remover, it's buffered and not likely to do that. Okay, okay, understood. All right, but if you use uh, just ammonia is very uh, uh, common uh, <laughs> and it's a very common uh, protein remover, but if you use uh, ammonia, you potentially can uh, ruin a silk or make it yellow. Okay, okay, okay. I appreciate your time and listening. And I thank you, Mr. Mr. Bob. Mr. It is definitely a very, uh, very informative and thanks. Definitely, I want to, because Randy has just recorded this. I am going to see it again, again, again and again for to learn more on this point because you know it's very fast. But yes, we try. Yeah. I try to try to write it down something. But uh, uh, I ask uh, you know uh, Vishal. Uh, do arrange the MSDS uh, material safety data sheet right, right. for these. Uh, we need an MSDS sheet for this. Plus, That's our, on our website, on our website, uh, you will you will find the uh, safety data sheet. SDS. But whatever you have, you know, things you have experience of thirty five years, right? So I have to learn a lot of things. So uh, if anything. You know, kind of dosing, kind of uh, spotting my how many, you know, even a bucket, how many, what, what amount of dosing, what temperature. So, is there any manuals are available for this? Uh, you can call me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is a lot of trial and error that uh, has yeah, resulted that's, in that's, this. That's, in I, this, that's in, I this already procedure. discussed with Vishal about this because we are going to do a lot of trials on that uh, so before, let me, going let me back the, up. before going There's, to the customer. On our website, we have what's called a spotting chart, okay? And yeah, on our spotting chart will be listed a, lo a, lo a lot of different stains on the left-hand side. And mm -hmm. on the bottom of the spotting chart, you will see four different squares mm -hmm. on the right, identified by color and by, 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 by letter. If you mm -hmm. see a stain like curry on the right-hand side, you'll see a couple of uh, different um, recommendations. This is a okay. very- very handy guide that you can print out right from our website. All right, uh, right. I'll do that. And, I'll do that. And the safety data sheets are also available to you. There's also uh, uh, um, overviews that you can print out, which give you directions. Um, I, I welcome your call. Uh, if it's a long distance call, you can call uh, the. Uh, you can call me on WhatsApp. You can call me. On yeah, yeah, I can. I can. It's a long distance call. We can call. We can. We can in touch with this. I want to learn more from you. Yeah. And uh, definitely, before going to the customer, I want to be, you know, very, you know, kind of. At least I can, you know, uh, tell them how to use it because if you're not given the how to use, then it's not yeah. no point me moving to the customer. So the other thing, the other thing, reason... training is required. Still, still, I can find a uh, uh, lot of, uh, you know, combinations. Lot of, you know, learning from you. Definitely, we will definitely. So thank you. I, I recently did uh, five different videos for um, a newspaper, and mm -hmm. I can, I can send you the links uh, to those if you like. They're on YouTube. Yes, yes, definitely. Everything you know, I'm going to welcome whatever the suggestions and all the reviews and all the you know training part because it is spotting is something it is required a lot of training, a lot well, of training. I, we have to get trained into the spotters. I will learn from you. And I will learn from you the Indian applications, and you can yeah. learn from me what I think about uh, how to resolve it. What is your? Uh, may I have your email address, or can you text it to me? 
I'll 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 text. I'll I'll, I'll we will I'll text you the uh, my mail address and my uh, you know even the phone number also right. so that we're in touch, right? Thank right. you, Randy. It's a great it's a great great things, and uh, we'll 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 have a more classes from you in the future. Yeah, absolutely, sure. Any uh, anytime, anytime, Randy. Right. Randy will arrange it anytime. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You know. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. You know, as you know, okay. You know, as you know, uh, Mr. Wendy, you know, we are planning, we received the uh, chemicals uh, today in the office. Uh, the, uh, you received some chemicals today. Okay. Chemicals some, uh, in the office, uh, okay. you know, which was sent to us by our Dubai office. Okay. The courier day before uh, from the stock. Uh, since we plan to give a live demonstration during the Ahad exhibition. So this is what we plan. Uh, apart from you know, just uh, we're not going to put only in the show window. We are also going to live demonstrate while removing the stains. I'm, I'm uh, Bob. I'm making a swatches of you know uh, stains like rust, yeah. ink, yeah. food, coffee, yeah. tea. I'm not going to take more. I'm just keeping four or five stains yeah. handy, handy. I'm making swatches, and I'm going not going to keep it for long. If I do some such as uh, stain marking on the night, tomorrow I'm going to give the demo because it is easy for me to, you know. Sure, sure. It's, it's fresh. It's, I'm not going yeah. to do it on a clothes. I'm going to do on a cotton white and a, a light blue color. We have decided to create some searches so that yeah. at least for five days, we can understand also and give, you know, demo to the people. That's exactly what I did with the uh, videos that I'm going to send you. I did exactly oh, that. Exactly the same thing. I showed yeah. one blood one uh, blood demonstration for the Sogo. Uh, uh -huh. I showed uh, wine removal. Uh, uh -huh. I, I showed ink removal. Uh, uh -huh. uh, and there's, there's 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 several of them. And I showed bleaching yeah. also. Same, same, same. My planning is same to do same thing in the yeah. this five day exhibition. So yeah. at least we create some awareness in the you know market. There's a lot so, of foot layers and a lo lot of retail laundry people are coming. You need to. You need to keep in touch with me because I, I need to I need to learn what you learn about my products in the Indian application. <laughs> definitely. I'll definitely give you in touch. Right, right. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. All right. So take care. Bye -bye. Uh, I'm sorry, Vishal. Did you have something else? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, also we were you know, planning uh, planning, you know, in the uh, coming uh, time, you know, along since we are stocking the machines here now. Uh, for the laundry and the uh, also the stack washers. So what we are going to do along with the machines, we also plan to you know promote the chemicals, which is the spotting chemicals. You know, since it will be easy enough for us to promote these chemicals while uh, giving with the machines. Also, this is how what we plan. We will share the you know our complete plan once you know I sit with the Shashi also during the AHA, since uh, more senior people are coming to from Dubai also, they are coming here. We will plan out and you know, we'll come out with the strategy. Okay. So this is how what we plan. So, and once again, you know, thanks a lot. Really, thanks a lot. Very informative, I'll say, for all of us. <laughs> and thank you so much to Mr. Bob for your time, yeah. for the knowledge, you know. Oh, you're welcome, anytime. For the last last one and a half hour you are you know simply talking and you're i, I understand that you are <laughs> your throats are tired now <laughs> i can say that you know your 35 year experience you have put it in one and a half hours to us I'll, I'll correct you about 30 years 30 years yeah. <laughs> well, I, th I thank you guys for all for taking the time i know thank it's late you so night. much um, and certainly we can schedule a follow up. We can answer any questions. I'm always available via email. Bob is always available via email as well. Yes. I think Vishal, I think I sent you his email and his cell phone number um, in sure. case you ever want to reach out to him directly with any questions. Um, I'll follow up to this. I'll, I'll figure out how to send you the recording. Um, I'll send the links that Bob was talking about. Um, and in the package that we sent you for the trade show, uh, we included the, the pull up banner um, that you can set up uh, that has the pairs of products on it, the, the, the EasyGo and uh, Targo EF on one side, the RightGo and the Laundry Targo on the other side. Um, and uh, also some marketing, some spotting charts, uh, some ads that we're running here in the States, which I think it makes sense to, uh, as a good way to uh, pitch our products. Um, 
they also talk a little bit about the eco-friendliness and worker friendliness of the uh, the extra value added that those have there. So if you have any questions as you go through that, certainly always just feel free to reach out to us directly. Sure. I acknowledge, you know, we received that in the office, the material. Yes. Uh, you know, and uh, we have got that roll up which you sent uh, both the sites, you know, this is what we plan to display. Perfect. Perfect. So, well, I wish you guys uh, good luck at this show. I know it's coming up in a couple of days. Yeah. <coughs> um, so, uh, yeah, certainly if any, uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, um, we'll, uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. Thank, thank you. Everyone. Bye. Thank you. Everyone. Have a good one. Thank you. Do you want me to stay on?